Hello, my name is John Hoey. Um, I collect a great many things, but mostly uh, military to do with the First World War and the Second World War, naval. My interest stems from the fact that I'm also a third year uh, uni student studying uh, modern history at James Cook University. I'm interested in photographs per se because to me they capture a moment in time, they capture almost a person's soul and for many of these photographs, these are the last photographs ever taken of this person, so there is nothing else to remember them by, just the image that's been trapped in time. I find them in all sorts of places, I find them in bookshops, I find them uh, in auctions, uh, military auctions overseas more often than not, uh, I find them in, the, in, in families. Uh, and one that I found in a rubbish dump. I was throwing stuff out and to me, he's in a sterling silver frame and he's the unknown soldier. Probably the most modern photograph that I have in my collection that I display is uh, Robert Nack, who was a Grenadier Guards officer who was killed during the IRA terrorist times in the United Kingdom. And he's unique because he was posthumously awarded the George Cross, which is the equivalent of the Victoria Cross. And that is Princess Mary, the Princess Royal. Uh, the photograph is of her, and she's 25. And the gentleman that's next to her is uh, the Earl of Harewood, and he's 39, although they always look older in these photographs. And if you don't think you've ever heard of her, perhaps if you look in your drawer, you might find your grandfather's or your great-grandfather's gift tin from Princess Mary that was given out on Christmas 1914 to everybody, including Australians, South Africans, Rhodesians, Indians, etc., who were serving in uniform on the King's Call in Christmas 1914. The Princess Mary uh, gift tin uh, could hold various things. For smokers, it was a pipe and tobacco, cigarettes, chocolates, and really it was what culturally was acceptable. Uh, the wren in the photograph is uh, Edith Farmer. She was 18 years of age and she was in a very uh, infamous, famous, whatever, incident where the guard's chapel, uh, they were at Sunday service in the end of 1944 and a, uh, a V2 struck the chapel, killing 150 or 60 people, including her. She was just 18 years of age and it's worth remembering sometimes that it's not just men on roles of honour. It can be women as well, and very young ones, as in, in the case of Edith. None of my photographs are copies. They are all original portrait photographs, usually from very high quality studios. And it is interesting that uh, more often than not, the quality of the photographs, Great War, and even pre-Great War, Boer War, are higher than the early photographs taken during World War II. The photograph of the ship is probably my favourite at the moment because it's something that I've just managed to get hold of. Catastock was a very, very interesting World War II destroyer and she has a unique position in the history of the Royal Navy in that when the commanding officer was killed on the bridge and the executive officer was seriously wounded on the bridge, the number one, the next most senior officer who became the captain of the ship for three days was the ship's surgeon. And that's the only time in the history of the Royal Navy that, that has ever happened. It's particularly interesting to me because not only do I have a photograph of the Catastock, I have the Catastock ship's bell and her name badge. Both the bell and the badge were presented to the family of Richard Caddy, the 25-year-old, as he was when he took command of the ship, captain. And Caddy was one of three sons, all of whom were killed in World War II, the other two being Air Force pilots. And there's a lovely photograph of uh, Richard Caddy because he's very typical of that generation. They all joined at 15 or 16 years of age. That is uh, him as a young midshipman. And so highly thought of was he by his crew that when the ship was decommissioned, probably again uniquely, the bell and the screen badge, the very large bronze badge, ship's badge, was presented to his mother and father. When they in turn passed away, the bell was then presented to the family of the ship's surgeon who'd become the captain. And when he passed away, uh, I managed to buy the bell. So I, it's part of my collection now. 
Another photograph I'm very fond of is because to me he's very typical of this country's loss in the Great War. David Mortimer Shannon was an old boy of Geelong Grammar. He was a prefect. He was due to inherit a cattle station. He was absolutely Australian top draw. And as soon as he possibly could, he got on a ship, travelled at his own expense to the United Kingdom, joined the Royal Field Artillery, which is what a lot of other the Geelong boys who didn't wish to go through the ranks, they wanted an instant commission, did. And within a year, he was killed at the age of 19 after having been awarded a military cross and further recommended for a bar to his military cross. That's his commissioning photograph, so that would have been the day he got to be an officer. And probably the last photograph of him ever taken in uniform. If you have photographs at home, please write the name of the person in the photograph on the back, because so many times I come across the most beautiful quality photographs and I have no idea who this person is. Sometimes I can trace it just by looking at the photograph and the details. Other times they just, to me, unknown warriors. When I no longer collect or when I'm hit by a bus and I'm no longer around, I'm always aware of the fact that I don't own anything. I just have things that are in my possession. And I would like somebody who thinks the same way as I do to take my collection from me and display it the same way as I have done, whether it's in a museum uh, or whether it is in a, a private collection. It's irrelevant to me as long as they are displayed for people to see. I hope you find uh, as much enjoyment in uh, looking at my collection of photographs and objects as I have in collecting them. And I hope they are of some value and interest to you. Thank you.